Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snelp. And today we are doing another Android tutorial as part of the Android tutorial series. And these videos will come out once to twice a week. So please feel free to share these videos so it helps as many people as possible. Now as far as things goes, this particular video is the ninth video in the series. I'm assuming that you've seen the other videos, so please feel free to check them out if you hadn't, so you will be caught all up. Now, one thing I want to mention before we jump fully into this is for those of you who already have GitHub, please feel free to check out the GitHub link in the description. Because of a error, I actually had to recreate the entire application based on the videos already done, fortunately. But so I don't have to do that again and I can just simply copy and paste and, and just get back to where we were in case if some mess up happens. I uploaded all the stuff publicly on GitHub and that way you can also play around with the code. So please feel free to check that out and that way you can take a personal look at it. But I highly advise you to instead of simply copy and pasting that particular code since you're learning, simply just code the stuff yourself and that way you can get a good feel. Then later on, once you get some experience, go ahead and copy and paste because that's what all the pros do anyways. But anyways, let's jump on in. So in this particular video, we're going to get into a few things. One of the biggest is how to dynamically change the background color. This is gonna be used for every time that we select a new thing on here. So, so as far as if you want to do this ahead or follow along, there's three primary things that we have to do. First off, we have to declare a field with a data type of the relative layout the format is just like our other view fields but with the difference name and data type set this field in the on create method just like the other views you may need to add an id to the relative layout in the layout field and lastly we where we set the who we learn how to code Android from, we need to set the background color method on the variable and use color.red as a parameter. Now, one thing I want to add in here real quick, just jumping in on a side note, I made a video today, in fact, on February 1st, uh, I made a video getting into, it might be January 31st when I made it, on how to do a lot of this stuff. Not not in completely, but how to do a lot of this stuff in a little bit more advanced. So if you want to jump way ahead and see some stuff you can do with hardware and stuff like that with real world examples, please feel free to check that out. And that will be in the actual card on the top right. So let's jump on into this. So let's go step one. So step one, what we need to do is go right here under the declare our variables and right above this area, the on create and do a private relative layout and then do M and just I'm a little bit lazy. <laughs> Let's do that. And there we go. We got step one out of the way. Now, as far as the next thing, we need to simply identify this. I'm just going to put a space in there just to fix things up and tidy things up by doing that. And you might be wondering why did that turn green? It's because it actually was commented out and as we were tightening that up. 
but let's go down here to where we identify the stuff and what we need to do is go to M relative layout and just hit tab and that auto completes that a little bit then equals and then do the relative layout and then find view by ID R dot ID dot and what you need to notice and I really want to emphasize this is you will see all the IDs now we didn't make an ID for the relative layout so therefore you obviously won't see it but any IDs that are in this app you will see within this area so what we need to do is simply go back to our activity menu and go towards the top and by the way if something is slightly off again I had to rebuild this and that's why I added the GitHub stuff so I want to go into this first area the relative layout and then we go down press enter for this thing and I personally you can you can have it like this as far as your coding before it, it's fine as long as it's within here. If it's after that, it's it's won't work. But if it's before, it will work. But personally, for management and and just ease of read, I personally like to have it like this, where it's right below the code that you're about to write. In that way, it's easier to deal with. But again, if you want to have it right after a given code it's just fine so as far as this goes what we want to do is do android dot or um, semicolon id and then do a at plus id slash and we will call it relative layout now again for ease i'm just going to copy and paste that and let's just lowercase this so there we go and what we want to do is go back to the the main Java area and start typing out relative layout or just type in R in this case and it knows what you're wanting so we want to press tab and it will auto fill that then just hit semicolon so what just happened here what just happened is simply on the relative layout itself the overall layout we made a id making an id allows us to add functionality to it if you're not going to add functionality to a given thing on the layouts then there's no point in my opinion to have an id so for example if we had no plans to do anything with this text view then there's really no point in adding an ID but since we are going to do something with all the stuff then there's an actual point and you have to have an ID in order to do it and in order to do whatever functionality and here we had to assign the IDs so right here it knows whenever something happens with this with what we're going to command it to do later on it's going to, to relate to this particular id so the layout itself now let's go down towards the bottom in fact before we do that i want to show you another thing if we go out uh, over here and if we go down to here to the id we can actually see the actual ID itself change. And this is actually very useful in many cases. And a real world example showing this since I already have it up, I didn't realize I had it up before. This is a program that I'm actually working on kind of off and on. And one of the features is to see a burnout image on a screen so when you're buying a used phone it will 
simply allow you to see if the screen is worthwhile and stuff and if there's going to be actual problems. Because I want to have it where the person touches the screen at all, it goes back, I had to put an ID on the, the layout itself. Then with here, I was able to reference it and tell the application what I want to happen if a person clicks that. So that's a quick real world example in a narrow way where you can add or modify the ID is through the designer itself and it'll be right here where it says ID. Now what we want to do from here is go and tell the application to do something with it. There's no point in setting up all this stuff unless you're going to actually do something with the information. So what we're going to do is go down and do M relative layout. So we're referencing that period set background color and then do color so we're going for the color class that's already made in every app that you're dealing with and then we're doing capital red and that's it so let's test this out and all we have to do is press the plus button to test that out or better yet if you have already, one thing I advise you to do is download and install Gen Motion. I have a full video on that on my channel on how to deal with Gen Motion. And if you do have any questions on this, the links or something like that, let me know because personally, from my standpoint and from many developer standpoint, Gen Motion is the best emulator out there. So what we want to do is simply start that. And that way we have that starting up. And by the time it starts up, hopefully I can explain what's basically going to happen. So with this, what, what we've done is we've just done a ID on the relative layout itself all right so now it's started up and a little too fast but and let's go to a second or two all right it's up so let's tell it to go in there and what what's going to happen here is when it's clicked what needs to happen is all, all these things what we already told it to but with the layout the relative layout it will set the background color to red. So let's take a look at that. And what we need to do is simply click the button and it turns it red. And with the added ability, we made the button invisible. Red's not the best choice, obviously. And that's one thing you need to keep in mind with being a developer is you need to take a look at the colors and what's good for people's eyes and you don't want like to use white text and yellow background something like that but for this demonstration it's worthwhile to see the actual change but on top of that we're able to set the name school and so on so so we don't overload anyone and you have ample time to learn this thoroughly before we go through the next bit of the video i'm going to end this one right here in the next video we're going to get into how to create it more dynamic as far as how to get it to actually change to more than one color now with this please feel free to leave any questions or any comments strictly down with what we learned today or anything else. And also please feel free to share this 
with as many people as you can to help people and also please feel free to check our patreon campaign and donate there to help these videos keep coming out but if you liked this and if it has helped you out then leave a like subscribe and share and i'll see you in the next video and have a great day